Hello, everybody in fifth grade. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about writing hooks for your informational essays. So when we talk about hooks, the first thing we think of is, well, what is a hook? In the same way that a fishing hook is a, is a tool that grabs the fish, uh, your hook is going to be something that grabs your reader's attention and makes them want to read the rest of the essay. So there are three types of hooks that that good writers typically use. And then there's one type of hook that some writers use that we are not going to be using in fifth grade because it's just not a good choice. So the first hook that, that good writers do use is the personal anecdote. In an informational essay, you're writing about something nonfiction based and typically could be seen as pretty boring. So let's take dinosaurs as the topic. Let's say you're writing an informational essay about how the dinosaurs went extinct. Okay, if you're thinking of a personal anecdote, you're thinking of a story that could be about you, and um, it's kind of the way to draw in the reader before you start talking about climate change and asteroids and such. So a personal anecdote, I'm going to tell you a secret. It doesn't have to be true. So it can be a lie but it has to sound like it's the truth. I could say, for example, that my personal anecdote relating to dinosaurs is when I was eight years old, Jurassic Park came out and my brother took me to the movies and I have never been so excited in my whole life. That's my way to hook in the reader. Um, so I'm going to talk about dinosaurs, but first I start with a hook about when I went to the movies. Now, did I actually go to the movies with my brother? Yes. Was it the best movie I had ever seen? No. Truthfully, I was terrified and hid under his arm the entire time. But that doesn't really make a great personal anecdote for this essay. So I can always take my hook, my personal anecdote, and twist it a little bit so that it sounds like the truth, but it isn't actually the truth. The second way you can write a hook is by using descriptive language. When I say descriptive language, I typically mean starting with three adjectives. So, again, if I'm writing a hook about dinosaurs, an informational essay about dinosaurs, my hook of three adjectives might sound like ferocious, gigantic, and ancient are three words I think of when I think of dinosaurs. That that then I go right into how dinosaurs became extinct into my essay. That'll work just fine. Um, one of the things you want to be careful of when you're using the descriptive language is that your 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 descriptive words aren't synonyms. So if I had said ferocious, mean, and scary are three words you think of when you think about dinosaurs. Well, not really, because those are all essentially the same word. So when you're using the um, the descriptive language one, you want to make sure that you're using three different kinds of, of descriptors to describe whatever you're describing. So the third way that we can write a hook is by using an interesting fact. And this one is always a little bit tricky for beginning informational essay writers, and here's why. It's hard for you to come up with something that's interesting that wouldn't also belong in your paper. Um, uh, if I'm thinking about dinosaurs, we're going back to the dinosaurs um, essay, I might do something like look up a fact about Steven Spielberg who made Jurassic Park and I might come up with an interesting fact about the movie Jurassic Park. Let's say um, Jurassic Park was entirely filmed with animatronic dinosaurs. Okay, well that has nothing to do with how dinosaurs became extinct. So it's a random fact. It's a random interesting fact. And I'm going to tie it to the how dinosaurs became extinct. It might sound something like this. Uh, Steven Spielberg's movie, Jurassic Park, was entirely filmed with animatronic dinosaurs. 
Steven Spielberg is not the only person who has been fascinated by dinosaurs. Many children, especially boys age seven, have have spent their time wondering about the glorious creatures. And then I would go on to describe the history of dinosaurs and how they become extinct. The trick with using an interesting fact is that you have to go online and find an interesting fact and then figure out how to connect it. So if I had just said an interesting fact about, um, about Tyrannosaurus rex is that they had very short arms. Well, that's not, that is an interesting fact, but it's so closely related to my informational essay about dinosaurs that it actually isn't much of a hook. It's just something I would use in my paragraphs when I'm describing dinosaurs. So these are the three ways that you can write a hook. There's descriptive language, personal anecdote, and interesting fact. Now, real quickly, I want to talk to you about the fourth way that you can write a hook, and that is the way we are never, ever going to write a hook at, in Hausner's fifth grade, and that is with a question. Here's why. When we talk about questions, we usually um, talk about, oh yeah, creative question that gets the the juices flowing of the person of the reader. But it turns out that most of the questions kids write sound like this. Have you ever wondered what happened to the dinosaurs? No, I have not wondered whatever happened to the dinosaurs. Don't ask me. I'm not hooked. I'm not interested. I don't care. Or what, how did the dinosaurs become extinct? In this paper, I will tell you. Oh God, please do not tell me. I am not hooked. You have not caught my interest. You've just written a silly, redundant question. So if it was something really philosophical, like had an asteroid not um, hit the earth, would the dinosaurs still be around today? That might be a good hook of a question that makes the reader think deeply. But have you ever wondered about how the dinosaurs went extinct? That didn't help me think deeply. That just made me bored. We're here to help you. We're here to help you figure out how to write hooks that are great for essays that are sometimes really challenging. So if you have questions, go ahead and ask us, but they should definitely be grounded in um, what you have learned in this video. All right, good luck.